All right, so section 2.1 is all about logical um, form, how you put logical arguments together um, from a mathematical standpoint. Um, so a statement or a proposition of the sentence is both true, is true or, that is true or false, but can't be both, okay? So we're gonna be making statements. So we're gonna be putting statements together. So we're gonna say P, let's say, is our proposition or our statement. <clears throat> okay, if I mean not P, then I'll write like this, not P or if you will, the negation of P. Okay, so P might be raining, so not P, obviously not raining. Okay, um, P could be female, uh, not P could be not female. Okay, it's pretty straightforward, not that big a deal. We're gonna see this, uh, P and Q, is how that is read. It looks like an intersection. That's exactly how you remember it, okay? You call this the conjunction of them. It's where they come together. You get them both, okay? P or Q. Uh, it's the disjunction, they call that. Okay, the idea here is, is it looks like a union. Exactly right. The same premise. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about those things um, in, in some good detail coming forward here. Uh, we talked about not P. Um, so think about this. You can talk about truth tables. So you got P and you could have not P. Listen, if P is true, then not P is obviously false, right? So uh, J is taller than average. My God, all right, there it is. So that was your proposition. That's a true statement. So J is short, is, uh, is is false then, because if you will, it's or if J is not taller than average. Well, that's false. That's the opposite of what you said. What you said was true. The opposite of what you said is false. If you said J is a, uh, is a highly intelligent human being, ah, that's false. So the opposite of that is true. Okay, there's two things that you can give. Your statement can be true or false. And, of course, the negation of those are the opposite of those two things. That's all it can be. Now, what if you put a compound statement together? Compound statement together. Okay, you could say P. You could say Q. You could say them both. Okay, so here's the game. So you said P and you said Q. All right, cool, whatever. So then P and Q. All right, so J is... J is, uh, J used to play football. Well, that's true. Okay. But for some average person, that could have been true or could have been false. All right, whatever. Uh, J has an IQ over 110. I doubt it. I don't know. I've never done it before. But whatever. But let's say that that's true. Well, then if you do P and Q, well, if these are both true, then this is also true. Okay. If J did play football, but J's IQ is not over 110, in other words, that's false. Then P, so true and false are not both false. They're not both true, so it's false. Again, if you look at this, there's two things this could be. It could be true or false. There's two things this can be. Two times two is four. By the way, another reason I like to look at probability first. Two options for each. Two times two is four outcomes. Again, that also has to be false. And then, of course, false and false. Now, this one is the one where you have to be careful. We want to talk about P and Q being true. That's what we're interested in, okay? You with me? So if they're both false, well, P and Q are both false. Therefore, the statement is still false, okay? If you were to turn that around and go P or Q, J is a good-looking fella or J is smart. Ooh. <laughs> Not so much, but anyway. P or Q, well, yeah, they're both true. So P or Q would also be true. Hey, this one's true, but this one's false. doesn't matter. I want one or the other to be true. I'm good either way. Sweet. Hey, this one's true, but that one's false. Doesn't matter. I want one or the other. And then, of course, they're both false. Sorry, you strike out. <laughs> He's an ugly dude and not too sharp. I heard this one the other day. He's a butter knife. Get that? He's a butter knife. He's not the sharpest. <laughs> He's not the sharp. Yep. So there you go. So those are what are called truth tables. Truth tables. That's what these things are called there. And it's all about truth. We're interested in the truth aspect of it. Okay. So we're going to work through those a little bit there. Okay, and we're going to see how they kind of play out. Can you make uh, a bunch of of, uh, of these truth tables where you have multiple statements? P, Q, and R, for instance. Sure you could. Sure you could. 
And and then could you also do well not p I suppose sure and maybe um, I don't know p and r well, not p and r how about q and r probably sure I don't know well whatever so let's see what happens here p and r nice I'm sorry. damn it q and r and oops or I'm sorry or let's do or not p Cool. Look at what's happening here. Okay, um, so what I want to know is is I'm interested in these guys. I want to know about truth or not. So again, now there's P, Q, and R. They could all be true, or they could. So there's eight outcomes here. We could list them all out. It's pretty straightforward. There's all eight of them, yes? Okay, pretty sweet. What is not P? Well, not P is F, 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 because it's obviously not true. Okay, it's the opposite of what I had. What about Q and R? Q and R both have to be true for this to be true. So that's true. Nope, 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 yep. Nope, nope, nope. Excellent. So what I want to know is between these two statements are at least one of them true. That's what this is asking for over here. Yep. Nope. 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 Yep. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I got one too many yeps, I guess. Okay. Um, not terrible. Not not terrible. If you're like looking, if you're like looking in your book, you're like, ah, oh, Jay, I think you kind of messed one of them up there. Uh, bear in mind, I did a different one. Okay, so I did, uh, I changed it up slightly. They did not R or whatever. Uh, slightly different. The same things, different patterns. Okay. Uh, pretty easy to do, though. Okay. Uh, does it matter whether you do, and this is one that I remember when I was a kid, I was kind of confusing a little bit. P and Q, Q and P. Does it matter which direction you go? Nope. It's equivalent the same. Why is that? It's, you want to know where they're both true, in essence. So, okay. So it doesn't matter which one you said first. Um, sometimes, if you think of it from this standpoint, because I always put everything back into probability standpoints. If you think of it from this standpoint first, you might weed a lot more people out. For instance, you want to look at all math majors. You're like, wow, there is not many math majors, Jay. So you just weeded out zillions of the population. All right, math majors. Let's say P is math majors. So you just you wiped out 99% of the population because there's not that many of us that major in math. All right, cool. And then you went in and said, all right, listen, and I want brunettes. You're like, really? What? Yeah, exactly. So people with brown hair, whatever. All right, cool. Uh, where are they both true? Well, guess what? You could have done this first. You could have said brunettes first. How much of the population does that wipe out? Not many, because there's a lot of brown-haired people in the world, right? Maybe more, maybe wipes out 60% of the population, but it certainly doesn't wipe out 99% of the population. And then you finish whittling it down to the same amount. You just whittled out a different chunk of it first, okay? The first time you did a math major, there's hardly anybody majors in math in this country. So, man, you whip it down to nobody, and then you finish chopping that down to just, I want just the brunette math majors. Cool, all right, weird. Uh, but yeah, but if you just said, listen, let's get rid of, I want just the brunettes. Well, that gets rid of a bunch of people, but not nearly as big a chunk. And then when you sort out from there, just the math majors that are brunettes both together. Okay. You get down the exact same por portion. Eventually you end up in the exact same, equivalent, uh, same exact same place. Okay. So we call that, we call that, we call it equivalent. Okay. And so the definition of equivalent is this. And you're like, wait, is this kind of like an equivalence class? Uh, it has the same kind of premise to it, but it's a little different in terms of just straight up sets. Uh, two statements are logically, equi logically equivalent, logically equivalent, if and only if, now remember that what that means, it goes both directions, if and only if, they have identical truth values for each possible uh, substitutional statements of their variables. Okay, if and only if they have the same, same uh, truth values for each statement.
Okay, for each possible statement. Okay, uh, and we have note we denote that as p is equivalent to q. Okay, two statements are logically equivalent if their identical uh, component statement variables are used to replace identical component statements. Okay, so we can so how this is how you do it. You can you put together a two table statement like we did a minute ago. We're going to do here in a second. Test each combination of the truth values of a statement to see whether or not the true value of P is the same as the true value of Q. If in each row the true value of P is the same as Q, then P and Q are logically equivalent. If in some row P has a different value, they are not logically equivalent. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all there is to that. So we'll look at this and we'll kind of go along through it here and see what's what. Um, note, for instance, uh, um, uh, we'll do an example of those in a few minutes. By the way, what would happen if you did not not p? All right, this is why a double negative implies a ne uh, implies the positive. Okay, that's why that's true because you negated the negation. Okay. Um, A couple other little laws here, and then we'll get to actually doing some work here. So, De Morgan's laws. And the negation of an and statement. Is logically equivalent. to the OR statement where each component is negated. Well, I wonder what that means. Well, let's find out. So, not, so here's P and Q, yes? So let's do the negation of that. No, well, let's see. Let's check this out. Here is my box here. Here's P. Here's Q. Cool. P and Q is this, yes? So where is not P and Q? Well, not P and Q is everything else. There, you go away. Everything else is not P and Q. See that? So then the question then becomes... Well, what, what is De Morgan saying? De Morgan is saying, listen, you could take the negative of P and the negative of Q and do the intersection or the union of those two things. Well, let's see what that would be. Here is P. So this all here, all of this is not P. All right. And let's do Q. And all of this is not Q. What have I shaded in? I shaded exactly the same thing as the green area up there. That's what De Morgan's law is saying. Okay. Again, I think it, I think De Morgan's law is easier to understand once you have a little bit of a grasp of probability. That to me, it just makes the most sense. The negation of an OR. which again is a union, uh, is logically equivalent. Oops, I don't know how to spell stupid. To the and statement. Where each component is negated. What does that mean, Jay? Well, let's find out, friend. So, <clears throat> here's P. Here's Q. P or Q is this right here. This is P or Q. Okay? Now, that's what P or Q is. Okay, so what would not 
P or Q me. It'd be all of this mess out here, yes? Sweet. Okay. Now, let's do this. Let's take not P. And let's take not Q. Let's do them. Here's P. This. Oh, I kind of went. Oh, sorry, I kind of went through P. This is all not P. Okay. This. Well, where's my black pen? I kind of made a boober. This is all um, and, and by the way, the brown well, see the, the brown would have gone in here. Yeah, so there's no, yeah, the overlaps don't exist, okay? So then, that is where not P and not Q are, okay? But the brown would have been in that, would have overlapped in here. The brown would have overlapped in there. No, neither one of them would have overlapped in there. Oh, damn. There you go. Okay, so that's P and this is Q over here, okay? Now, not P, where do these guys overlap? Not P and not Q. Not P and not Q. We want to know where do they overlap one another. Well, they overlap one another, everything outside of the two circles, exactly like this picture up here. That's what De Morgan is saying to us. Okay? Uh, that's, that's the game. That's where they both intersect there. Okay? Um, so... A couple other things here, then we'll get doing some actual examples. A tautology, tautology, is a statement that is uh, of the form that is always is always true. Okay, is always true, and it's true regardless of the truth values substituted for statements. Okay, uh, the statement whose form is tautological is a tautological statement. A contradiction is a statement that is always false regardless of the truth value okay so a statement is called a contradictory statement okay um, so uh, when you look at it um, you know contradictions when you do proofs and stuff when you come to a contradiction so for instance one therefore therefore one has to be bigger than two uh, nope that would be a contradiction therefore the sum of the first 50 you know whole numbers have to add up to Less than 50. Oops, sorry, that's a contradiction. So contradictions come up frequently. Tautologies, we'll see a few of them in some examples as we go forward. Uh, but a contradiction is always false. Okay. Now, you might wonder, geez, is the commutative property active? Of course it is. So the commutative property... P and Q is logically equivalent to Q and P. We talked about that already. Is that true for the um, ors? Yep, it's true for the ors as well. Associative P and oops, P and Q and R. Doesn't matter how you do them. Again, it's very similar to the brunette and math major and taller than 5'8 or whatever. It doesn't matter which part of the population you knock off first. Eventually, you get down to the same people is what you're interested in. This is, of course, ors, and they are also logically equivalent. Okay. Um, distributive property. Distributed. I thought it was only for multiplication, not so fast, Haas. So it could be P and, right, Q or R. That'd be the same as saying P and Q or P and R. Same thing over here. Like that. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so check this out. Identity. Wait a minute, what identity? Identity is like when you add one or multiply by one. 
Uh, yep. What would that be here? Identity. What would that look like here? Identity. Yeah, it would be P and a tautology. Right? Is always P. Okay? Where do they overlap? They overlap with P. There it is. And then P or the tautology is what do you think? Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. P versus the P and the contradiction. Okay, it's just P. Okay, um, and that will always be true. Okay, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but check it out. So if you do this negation, this one here is very similar to adding, uh, like. We, it's very similar to it's very similar to the identity in terms of addition the additive identity if you did p and its negation okay those are when you put those two together you will always be true okay i'm sorry the or sorry or if you take p and its negation they both have to be true that can't be that is by definition a contradiction okay so we were talking about this, the double negatives, or double negation. So not P, not of not P is just P. Okay. Uh, the idempotent laws. So P and P is P. Okay, P or P is also P. Universal bound laws. Very similar to when you do a roll of dice. Uh, you will get a number between 1 and 6 on the dice. Okay. If that's a 6-sided dice. Uh, can I get a 7? You can't get a 7, sir. So, the tautology in this case, all right, is the, the sample space, in essence. Okay. Where do these guys over... Where do they, If you put these together, P plus the tautology, then you will get the tautology, okay? You could think of that as being the number, the even numbers or the numbers one to six on the dice. Well, the numbers one to six is what you're gonna get, obviously. And if you do P and the tautology, oops, sorry, sorry, P and the contradiction, where do they overlap? The contradiction, okay? Um, can't think of a good one off the top of my head for that one. But we already did De Morgan. This one, I wrote it out already, but I'll go ahead and write it out. Yep, and... Ah. Yep. The absorption laws this is the Morgan absorption P or P and Q. All right, so if you do P and Q, where do they overlap? They have some overlap. That's great. So then when you take them and you put them together, all right, think about what's going to happen here. Well, if you distribute this, you're going to get P or P by the idempotent. That's P, obviously. P or Q. So you're going to have and P or Q. Okay. So then where do these guys overlap with one another here? So P and oh, P or Q. Uh, you're going to get just... P. Let me see if I can draw that picture out here. Okay. Okay. So here's P. Oops. This is P, sorry. Here's Q. Cool. Okay. P and Q is obviously this thing, yes? So if you take that slice right there and you take P, okay, and you put them together, what do you get? You get P. Okay. And then if you do... Uh, P and P or Q, P or Q, you will always get what? P. Okay, let's see why that is. So we want P or Q. Well, P or Q is the sum of both circles. Okay, it's the sum of both circles. So then the question is, where does P overlap the sum of both circles? Well, it overlaps just on P. Okay, again, I think the Venn diagram helps to illustrate that a little bit.
So the negations of T and C Uh, so if you take not T, okay, if you take the opposite of a tautology, you will get a contradiction. If you take the opposite of a contradiction, you will get a tautology. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Okay. So let's go through. We'll do some examples of these. We'll see what happens here. It's a good time. I'm going to pause for just one moment while I get ready for this. All right. Too many computers, too many emails. Ah! All right. Here we go. So check it out. So here is the idea. We want to do... Uh, there's a common form of each argument that, uh, 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 fill in the blank so that the argument is in part is the same logical form as the argument in part A. Okay, so for instance, if all computer programs contain errors, then this program contains an error. All right, cool. All right, I'm going to take a picture of this so you can see what I'm talking about. And, come on, camera, there's my camera. Give it to me. Cool. So there we have that. Look at my toe. That's weird. All right. Uh, let's see here. If I go to insert pictures, mm -hmm. camera. Oh, oh, right there. Stupid. Yeah. Probably this one, I guess. Huh? Oh, I forgot how small it makes them initially when you first do this. Now, there's your picture. Hope you like it. Mm hmm. So much easier, Jay. <laughs> cool. Let's uh, let's go even bigger, yo. Drag you up there. Let's drag the corner of this down and over, as you know. And why aren't you getting? Oh, there's the corner I was looking for. Stupid. There you go, big doof. All right. So if all computer programs contain errors, then this program does not the, does con, contain an error. The program does not contain an error. Therefore, it is not the case that all programs that not all computer programs contain errors. Okay. So the first part was if p then q, right? Okay. So if p then q. Okay. Two. Okay. So well, I don't know. See what they. Oh, but they. Oh, I see what they want to see. They're looking at odd numbers. Here we go. Okay. So, if a number is um, prime, so it's clearly about prime numbers. You see that and odd numbers. Okay. If a number is prime, then the number is odd. Okay. So two is not odd. Therefore, it is not the case that all prime numbers are odd. That's what they wanted you to do, just fill in the blank on that guy. Okay, let's do another one here. We'll do number four, because I like that one. It makes me happy. Makes me happy. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like we're in here, and let's go to insert pictures. It's that one right there, I think. I think, I think, I'll say. I'll say. Sweet. If the number is divisible by 6, then n is divisible by 3. If n is divisible by 3, the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. Therefore, if n is divisible by 6, the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. Assume that it is a particular fixed integer. Okay, <clears throat> so if n is divisible by 6, divisible by 3, clearly that's true. If n is divisible by 3, the sum of its digits is divisible by 3, that's true. Therefore, if there it is, that, that's a true statement. So if the function, if this function is blank, then the function is differentiable. If the function is blank, then the function is continuous. Therefore, if the function is a polynomial, the function is continuous. Uh, then this function is blank, okay? If this function is a polynomial, then it is dif uh, if it's continuous, then it's differentiable. Continuous. If the function is a polynomial, it is continuous. 
okay? And therefore, if the function is a polynomial, the function is differentiable. Okay? Now, it's kind of weird the way they wrote it. I won't like that at all. I say this function is continuous, then it's differentiable, all right? Remember that back in the day when you had a function. Whee! Continuous function, okay? Function is continuous, the function is differentiable, okay? Uh, continuous meaning you can draw it without lifting your pencil, okay? Um, the only example of that that's not true is this guy that's not differentiable at a point, okay? Um, there it is, all right? The function is a polynomial, the function is continuous, that's true. How did I know to pick polynomial? Because it mentions polynomial down here, obviously. We need to tie polynomial and differential together, clearly, okay? So, uh, well, there you go. All right. Okay. Let's do another one here. Cool. So, stocks are increasing is S. T or I interest rates are steady. Interest rate steady. Okay, cool. And we're just going to use symbolic forms of not or an and to write the following sentences, okay? So for instance, stocks are increasing, but interest rates are steady, okay? Now, in logical, but can be referred to as and, okay? So stocks are increasing, that's T, and interest rates are steady. Cool. Uh, neither stocks, neither are stocks increasing, that sounds like not, S. Oh, that shouldn't say S, sorry. Neither are stocks increasing, so not S, nor interest rates steady. Okay? And what do I mean by that? Well, the nor is another fancy way of saying and. Okay, neither this nor that. Um, so, neither one of those things is happening then. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, One moment, please. So another one I want to do here for you, an example wise, is um, problem number uh, number eight, I guess. So John is healthy is H. John healthy, wealthy is. John is wealthy. Cool. So John is healthy and wealthy. Uh, John is healthy. Oh, and then T is John. Oh, S is John is wise. There you go. John is wise. Okay. And so the first statement is John is healthy and wealthy. So that's H and W. But, and, and, but not wise, which means and not wise okay john is healthy but he is not wealthy so it's not wealthy but he is uh healthy and wise so and healthy and wise okay john is neither healthy wealthy nor wise Ooh, poor john <laughs> that sucks to suck pal Oops, there's an and in there somewhere. Okay. Uh, John is neither wealthy nor wise. But he is healthy. Okay, cool. Uh, by the way, he could have said the healthy part first. It wouldn't have affected anything. John is wealthy. Good for John. But he is not both wealthy, healthy and wise. Not both healthy and wise. So, so and not 
healthy, look healthy, and what? Okay. Okay, I want to look at this last one here again real quick. Okay, just want to rephrase it, make sure I got that right. G John is wealthy, that's true. But, so Ann, okay, he is not both healthy and wise. Okay, so I think I read that wrong. I think I want to do this, not this, and not this. Okay. And let's go back and look at that first one too. The first one, I just want to make sure I get this right. So, so the and the way that I want this to be clear is the fact that they put two together. He's healthy and wealthy. All right, cool. All right, but not wise. You see that right there? So and between the two of them, not wise. Let's look at all five, all three of them again. There. So John is well is not wealthy. So not W, but he is wealthy and or healthy and wise. I want to write like that. Okay, and what's the last one there? Uh, neither healthy nor wealthy nor wise. C is fine. I'm fine with that. And then E, John is healthy, is wealthy. Oh, I already did that. Never mind, I got that right. We're good. We're done. I guess we're done with that problem. Cool. All right, so let's do a truth table for these guys. So, for instance, let's do number... 14, I guess. So P, Q, and R. So let's go ahead and write those out. Again, I'm going to write all down all eight possible combinations. That, to me, is the fastest way to go about it. You can do you, but I will do the way I like to do it. So I just go ahead and list them all out. This is really the sample space from a probabilistic standpoint. That's why I like to do it this way. It makes me happy. Because I can visualize what's happening in the picture, boys and girls, if that makes me, it helps sell the bit in my head. Okay, there's eight outcomes there. Okay, because again, in life, you need a picture that's going to work for you. Okay, you need a picture that's going to work for you. And so let's say I wanted a truth table for, eventually, I want to do not P uh, or Q. All right. So the way you do this, I like to then actually add a column for not P. I think it makes it easier for me. If it doesn't for you, you can cut to the chase. You go right ahead. I can't do it very well. Okay. I want ors. So if I see a true, then this is true. True, 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 true. There's a false and a true. So that's true. There's a false and a false. There's a false and a true. And there's two falses. So there's my truth table for it. If I wanted to do one for... Parentheses, I want to do P and Q or R or not R. Let's do not or not R. Okay. Right down here, we better do a not R column. So not R would be false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. Will it always be that way? Only because I did true, false, true, false, true, false over here, right? So, and then me personally, I kind of like to do a P and Q column. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a P and Q column here. And then I'll just marry the two together when I get there. You, you with me? So P and Q are both true, both true. No, 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 no. So I want, so there's two trues here. And then I notice it, or this guy here. Okay. So we're true. If one of these is true, or one of this, or this is true, then we put a true. So true, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. Done. So truth table is pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do. The thing I hate in logic is when they do things like um, they they use some weird uh, things like rain is depressing or whatever well to some people it is i guess and then they they try to go all this well, and then people overthink it and then it just gets so confusing at some point you're just like well i don't know uh let's look at some of these guys here let's see if these are logically equivalent statements so how about this one so p and q 
or R. So I want to know if that's logically equivalent. In other words, I want to know, is this true? Uh, P and Q or P and R. I, I don't know. Let's find out. So, wait. Well, first of all, the distributive principle says that this is the same as this, right? Right? Right. Therefore, they are logically equivalent. Why are they logically equivalent? The distributive property. Okay. Could you show us that, Jay, with a, with a Venn diagram, maybe? Huh, I'm not going to hold out any hopes, though. Let's see what happens here. I don't know. R. So where do Q and R overlap? Well, Q and R overlap right here. Are you with me? Okay. So I'm sorry, Q and R. Sorry, it's Q and R. So it's all of Q and it's all of R. Are you with me? Okay. So then I want to... So what I really want to do is I want to know where P intersects those guys. All right. Well, let's find out. So where does P intersect this shaded stuff? Right there. Okay, that makes sense. Well, what is that saying to us? Well, what it's saying to us is this. So what it's saying is, is that you are taking, I want this light blue because it's pretty. What I want to do is take P and Q. So that'd be this slice here. And I want to take the union of that with this slice here. What does that become? becomes this bit right here. So yes, they are logically equivalent. They're logically equivalent by the distributive property, but I think the picture sometimes helps me, again, visualize it better. Let's do P or Q. P or Q. Or P and R. Well, that's just weird. P or Q or P and R. And then we want to see if that's equivalent to and... See if it's equivalent to P or Q and, oh, and R. Let's find out, okay? So, again, this is what I want to know. Is it true? Let's find out. So, a couple of things a guy could do here. They could draw a picture of this. Let's just see what happens here. Okay, here's P. Here's Q. Here's R. Nice. By the way, they don't necessarily have to overlap. You understand that, right? But it's easier for me to draw them if they do. So P or Q is all of this shaded area. Yes. Okay. Or P intersect R. Well, P intersect R is this bit right here. Are you with me? Oh, cool. Nice. So when they, where do they, so it's, it's an or situation. You with me? It's an or situation. So we're saying it's either the, all of this stuff or it's this little blurp right here. Well, that's interesting because it where they inter where they overlap or the, together the combined mess is still just that first part. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's do this over here. P or Q is this bit right here? Oh, fart. Just a moment. I do my picture fine. And you probably saw it and you were laughing at me. Thanks for laughing. I appreciate it. That's my feelers. I'll probably get over it though. All right, here's Pete. Let's try again. See if I can not screw it up this time. Freaking forgot who was R. There we go. So P or Q would be this bit up here, including all that stuff there. Yes. That's P. That is P or Q. Now let's go ahead and draw with our purple crayon. Let's draw P and R. Well, P and R is this bit right here. Are you with me? So I want to know. Oh, actually, I do it right last time. It just goof, looked goofy to me. So what I want to know is, is where do these guys overlap? Well, they overlap with what? It's still all of this stuff out into here. Okay? It's everything, including that bit right there. Now, let's look at this. So we've got P or Q. All right. Well, P or Q is, P is this, Q is this, the or is all of this, including that down there, and then where does it uh, intersect with R? So 
Something's screwy here. I'm done my picture's funny. I'm going to draw two different Venn diagrams. One moment, please. Let's try this separately. Good lord. Alright. Let's try this again. So, here's P. Here's Q. Here's R. Good night. So P or Q is these top two circles. And we're going to take the union of that with P and R. Well, P and R is this bit right here. So it'd be this little bit plus all these other bits out here. Okay, I guess Q includes that right there. All right. So P or Q. Oh, yeah, no, I did it right. Okay, whoa, good grief. It was just driving me crazy. Here we go. No, I got you. I got it. I'm on it, dog. There we go. So here's the game. So this says take P or Q, which again is the top two circles. Okay. And where do those intersect with R? Oh. Oh, that's that right there. So then the question is, are they logically equivalent? And the answer is, ah, no, they are not. With me, they are not logically equivalent because this includes those pieces and these guys up in here. This just includes those pieces right there, so they are not logically equivalent. Okay, that sometimes, by the way, kind of freaks a person out because you're like you weren't expecting that. It's very similar to I like to think of it this way: is when you buy a brand new part, you put it on the car, and it doesn't fix the problem, and then you realize what you you ended up getting. You tear your hair out for a few minutes, and then you realize. The part they sent you is, is a problem, and that's that's the biggest issue. Um, uh, so let's do this here. So we need to write. We're going to use De Morgan's laws to write negations for the statements in twenty-five thirty-one. Okay, so the statement that I'm going to give you is the units digit, units digit of 4 to the 67th power is a 4 or it is a 6. Okay. By the way, how do you know that? Well, 4 to the first power is 4, 4 to the second is 16, 4 to the third is 64, 256, da, 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 da. They will always end in a 4 or a 6, by the way. It's a fact. Okay. Now, let's look at De Morgan's laws again, just in case you've forgotten them. Okay. De Morgan's law says this. So not P and Q is the same as saying uh, not P or not Q, okay? And uh, not P or Q is the same as saying not P and not Q, okay? Brother, all right, so we are supposed to use the Morgan's laws to write negations for the statements okay so the unit digit of that is this or it is this or okay so i heard or okay so let's do this let's say it's not that okay so i guess we'll start with this one here just for fun so um the units digit is not Four or six. Okay. Oops. It is four or six. So then we're gonna write like this. Okay. So that's so. So what we're saying here is this. Um, so we're clearly saying it's four or six right now. So we're saying that it's not this. So we phrase it, I guess, this way: the units digit of four to the sixty-seven is not. is not four or six, which is equivalent to saying the units digit is not, is neither four nor six. Okay? So you can do it that way. Um, uh, this one's weird because you can't, it, it's, it can't be four and six already. Are you with me? It can't be four and six. It's either four or six. So this is the one that you would choose to use to write that guy. Okay. Uh, had it been an and situation, 
then I would have used the first one. So for instance, number 30, the dollar is at an all time high, dollar at an all time high, and stock record low, stocks record low. Okay, so remember the Morgan said, Oh, again, we're not gonna do, we're gonna do this one because we were given an and situation. So I want to negate this guy here, right? Because that's what we were told it was an and. Okay, so we're gonna negate that. And we're gonna say that's equivalent to saying so not P or not Q. Okay, so the um, knee. I'm gonna say this. Um, stock market uh, so I'm saying I'm doing the negation of that the stock market is not at all-time high uh, it's not an all-time high and it's not and it's not the word I want to use right there or well I just say or or the stock or the stocks at record low. Oops. This should be dollar. Dollar. Or the stocks are not at record low. Okay. Kind of some of those are kind of weird to phrase because it doesn't come out sounding quite right. Uh, it just doesn't sound as good when you say it. Um, I know what you mean. Sometimes it's a little hard to visualize it. Um, we are going to do number 40. And I um, just want you to see what's going on here on this one. We're going to build a truth table. So we need P and Q in our truth table. And then there, we're going to be asked questions about... Or oh, there's something in there about not P and there's something in there about not Q. So I'm going to go ahead and write them down. Okay, we're going to get those while we're here. Oops, stupid. So what it wants to know, it wants to know... P and Q or not P or P and not Q. Gross. And, and they want to know what happens when you do this. Well, I don't know. We better figure this out. So let's do a little P and Q. So P and Q is true. False, false, false. Nice. So let's do this here. P and not Q. P, oops, P and not Q. Let's go ahead and find this one out here. P and not Q would be, uh, where are we at? P and not Q is false true false false now i want to take the or of not p and this last column i did remember this is or so if either one of them if either of them is true i'm going to write true so that's p not p or p and not q okay so let's see what happens here so, uh, so not P and this guy, and this is an or. So if it's an or, either one of them can be true. So false, true, true, true. Okay, so I now what I'm looking at is I'm looking at this column here and this column here. And I need to put them together in an or fashion. So I need to take P and Q or not P 
and p not q, which is again this column and this column. Let's put them together. So it's an or. So true, 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 true. Son of a gun, it's always true. That's a tautology, baby. Nice. Now, had that come out to be all Fs, it's a contradiction. It's that easy. Okay? Take your time and try not to do it in your head because, oh, friends, friends, if I could tell you how many times I'd screwed this up, this kind of thing up, by trying to get too fancy and doing it in my head, uh, oh, it's disturbing. It is just plain disturbing. So what I always do is I always make a column for everything, and then I put it together a little bit at a time, and when it's all together, then you're like, oh, well, there it is. Cool. Done. And, and then, is it all true? Sweet. It's a tautology. If it's all falses, hey, it's a contradiction. If it's neither, then it's, and then it's neither. It's that easy.